Welcome back. So today we're going to read a story titled Volcanoes. And if you have a Wonders Anthology book, this is on page 322 and you can follow along with me. And if you don't, I have all the pictures here for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Volcanoes by Sandra Markle. Genre expository texts. Essential question. How does the earth change? Read about how volcanoes change the earth. One ordinary April day, something special happened. Hot liquid rock exploded from a volcano on Iceland. Once in the air, the bits of liquid quickly cooled and turned into ash. Then the volcano kept on erupting. Soon the air was full of ash. Nearby, a dairy farmer herded his cows into the family's big barn. His wife said, it was scary. I could hear the volcano rumbling like distant thunder. Soon, even though it was day, it was dark, and there were flakes falling from the sky. These were not white snowflakes, though. The flakes were black. When they touched my skin, they felt like sand. This volcano's eruption had a big impact on the local people and others around the world. So why did the volcano erupt? Compared to the whole Earth, the Earth's crust is thin. The crust is broken into pieces like a cracked hard-boiled egg. Each piece is called a plate. Deep inside the Earth's core is so hot, the rock around it heats up and moves. As the rock heats up, it rises. Near the crust, the rock cools off. Then it sinks. Scientists think these currents make the plates move. When the plates move, melted rock inside the earth rises. This melted rock is called magma. Photo caption. Below the ground and water, the earth's crust is broken into plates. Plates are on the move, but we can't feel it. The fastest plate moves just six inches each year. Information box. See magma for yourself. You can model what's happening to the magma under the earth's plates. With an adult's help, boil water in a pot. Drop a handful of raisins into the water. Watch, you'll see the raisins sink and rise. The water heats up at the bottom of the pan and rises. It cools at the surface and sinks. The raisins ride the currents. The currents move the magma under the Earth's crust. If the plates move far apart, magma reaches the Earth's surface. Magma may explode into the air. It may flow onto the Earth's surface. When magma flows out, it is called lava. Lava flows out at different places around the world. If a lot of lava flows out at one spot of the Earth's surface, it forms a mountain, a volcano. Many are along the edge of the Pacific Ocean. No wonder this is said to be the Ring of Fire. Volcanoes around the world. Key, red dot equals volcano. Volcano at Christchurch, Mount Fuji, Mauna Loa, Mount St. Helens, Santiago, Iceland Volcano. Lava may have different properties, like being runny or stiff. If the lava is runny, it spreads out on the Earth's surface before it cools and becomes solid. This kind of lava forms a flat, shield-shaped volcano. Mauna Loa in Hawaii is a shield-shaped volcano. It started when lava poured out of an opening on the ocean floor. Then lava built up in layers. Once the mountaintop was above water, it formed an island. Mauna Loa continues to be very active. It has erupted 39 times since 1832. Caption, Mauna Loa in Hawaii is the Earth's largest volcano. If the lava is stiff, it piles up on the Earth's surface and forms a cone-shaped volcano with steep sides. The volcano that erupted on Iceland is a cone-shaped volcano. It is not very active. Its last eruption was almost 200 years ago. While it is inactive, a lot of ice built up on the mountain. Then in 2009, scientists discovered the volcano was becoming active again. Caption, this is the volcano that erupted in Iceland. Stop and check, reread. What two shapes are volcanoes? Reread the text to find the answer. I'm looking at the text again and I notice that it says, 
shield-shaped volcano is the shape for Mauna Loa in Hawaii. And then in Iceland, that volcano was cone-shaped. So the two shapes of volcanoes are a shield shape and a cone shape. Let's continue. Scientists know a volcano is getting ready to erupt when it swells. This happens because magma pushes up inside the volcano. The mountain does not swell enough for people to see it getting bigger. Special instruments measure the tiny movements of the rocks. Other instruments record earthquakes around the volcano. Lots of quakes are another clue magma is rising inside the volcano. Caption, magma fills a chamber inside the volcano, then it pushes up a pipe-like part to the opening at the surface, the crater. The Iceland volcano erupted lava under its ice covering. The ice melted and turned into steam. If you've ever watched steam lift the lid on a boiling pot, you know what happened next. Steam and gas escaping from the volcano blew magma high into the air. The magma exploded into millions of tiny droplets. These cooled and became ash. Winds carried the volcanic ash across Europe. The volcanic ash could damage jet engine parts, so it was too dangerous to fly. Airplanes around the world were grounded. Some people were stranded. Caption, after the eruption in Iceland, ash covered the ground. Not just volcanic ash causes problems. Hot lava from volcanoes also creates damage. Flowing lava can destroy buildings and roads. The volcano named Mount St. Helens in Washington State once blasted out hot gas and knocked down whole forest. Caption, Mount St. Helens. Stop and check, reread. How can volcanoes cause problems? Reread the text to find the answers. So just remembering some things that I read, if there's ash in the air, then it's too dangerous for planes to fly. You don't want that ash to get into the plane's engine. So lots of planes were grounded because they couldn't fly. But then if you look at volcanoes that have lava that come out of them, they can take out whole forest. So there's lots of damage that volcanoes can do. Of course, the results of volcanic eruptions aren't all bad. For one thing, volcanoes build new mountains and islands. In Iceland, scientists discovered the bits of volcanic ash were coated with minerals plants need to grow. After the eruption, the dairy farmer had a big job of cleaning ash off his house and barn roofs. In the fields, though, the grass quickly shot up healthy and green. Soon, there was plenty of fresh food for his cows. Caption 1. Here, a farmer is sweeping ash off of his roof. Caption 2. The ash makes a healthy place for plants to grow. About the author. Sandra Markle writes books, creates TV shows, and develops online programs on all kinds of science topics. She has had many exciting adventures doing research for them. Sandra watched active volcanoes in Hawaii, New Zealand, and Antarctica. I never miss a chance to investigate volcanoes, says Sandra. They are dramatic proof that the Earth is an ever-changing place. Author's Purpose Sandra begins the selection by telling about the dairy farmer and his wife. How does their story help you understand what happens when a volcano erupts? And that is the end. And I think Sandra started off telling us the story about the farmer and his wife because she wanted us to know that volcanoes affect real people in this world. And also, I liked how it ended with the farmer and his wife because we learned that there was a lot of damage that was done. But then we also learned that the volcano didn't just do damage though. The ash from the volcanic eruption actually had healthy minerals in it, so the grass grew back better than ever. So it didn't take long for the cows to replenish their food supply. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning about volcanoes and that's it. We'll see you soon. Bye.